Thank you. Welcome to church today. We are here at the Church of Northwest University's preaching class. I'm excited to be here. My name is Kenny, and I get the honor and privilege to continue on the series that we started last week with Dr. Ehler on Challenge Accepted. Now, what the series we're doing is we're walking through the book of Philippians, and we're having this mentality, this idea of the challenge being accepted. We're stepping up to the plate, we're accepting it, and we're going with it, and we're running with it. Now, last week, Dr. Ehler, he came out and did a, a biographical narrative on the life of Paul, and he talked about uh, the Philippians, about the city of Philippi, how it was the northern part of Greece and Macedonia, how it was a Roman colony, it was heavily Roman influenced. Uh, it was like a retirement home for Roman soldiers. They wanted no taxation, they wanted to govern themselves. And he talked about Paul, how in Acts chapter 8, he kind of he was persecuting, uh, persecuting uh, the Christians, even uh, though Paul was a Jew. And then in chapter 9, Paul had a vision on Damascus Road and became a Christian. And so if you missed it last week with Dr. Ehler, I highly encourage you. We have it on video podcast. Our media team did a wonderful job, and it is online right now. You should go home and watch it. It's really good. But I am honored this week to continue the series of Challenge Accepted with part two of being a team player. And now, being more focused and getting wrapping your head around this idea of being a team player, we're going to watch this video. Oh, you know. Oh, 
うですよね Team, you gotta be a team player. And now I can relate to Smalls in a little bit of a way. I've played baseball for eight or nine years growing up, and I, I was not the greatest player. I was decent. I wasn't as good as everybody else, but I was decent. And you know, I would be the person, okay, this is what coaches tend to do, and I know you coaches, I know exactly what you think was what you do. Is you go, they're okay, you know, they're part of the team, we'll put them in the outfield and they'll make them think they're part of the team and everything's okay. You know, you put, you always put the not so great players out in the outfield. Well, my luck, I was out in left field pretty much most of the time growing up playing baseball. And, you know, it's all right. And I remember sitting there going, okay, I'm sitting there, I'm in my stance, I'm getting ready, let's play some ball, let's play some ball. I'm sort of thinking, hit the ball to me. I just want to do something. Hit the ball to me. Nothing's happening. I'm just like, I could take a nap in my spot and nothing would ever come my direction. Anytime a batter would hit a ball, Far, you would go out to center field or out in the right field. I'm just sitting there left going, this is dumb. What am I doing? I'm just like a, I'm just standing out here counting roses or counting butterflies that pass by, you know, and just, but I have to sit there and say two outs, you know, I'm still talking, chatting it up, being a team player. And, but at the same time, I'd sit there and go, no, do not hit the ball to me. Don't, don't, don't. Because what if I screw up? What if I screw up? My coach is going to yell at me so bad. I want to be the laughing stock. People are going to point fingers and laugh at me. My coach is going to yell at me. I'm like, don't hit the ball. But at the same time, hit the ball, hit the ball to me. And I'm like, no, no, no. I didn't I couldn't pick up my mind, pick my mind to switch I don't, as to where I end I wanted to be. But to say, I was on the Mets when I was 12 years old, and I was on the championship team for Babe Ruth Little League. Yeah, Not to uh, help that team at all. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I was playing left field as the other guys, you know, the pitcher and catcher and the guys playing the bases. You know, once in a while I got to play third base, and oh, that was excitement. Oh, I was, I was actually in the infield. It was wonderful. And you know, I was still a team player, even though I was still out on left field. I still want to be a part of the team. And the team, they made me feel part of the team as well. I wasn't the the small guy, Smalls. You know, the character from Sandler who's getting laughed at the entire time. You know, I was the, you know, still part of the team, having a fun time, but yet I was still not that great, not that good. So what do you do? What are the benefits of being on a team? Why would you want to be on a team? And what consists of a team? What do you have to have in order to have a team? Just why would you want to be on one? And in Philippians, you want to turn your Bibles to there. Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11 is going to be the text we're going to be in today. And it's going to kind of set up this idea of being a team. And... I'll be reading out of the New King James Version today, and if you do not have it by chance, I will have it on the screen for you as well. So we're going to go ahead and read through this here. So as Paul is writing and talking to the Philippians, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing that he has begun a good work in you, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as, it's, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all, you are all partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. What does it take to be on a team? Why do you have a team? What needs to be a team? And the first point I want to talk about, what do you have to have in order to make a team? First point is you have to have a coach. There has to be a coach. No team, you need to have a coach to, to give direction, to train, and to lead. And Paul here is that coach mentality as he's writing this. He's sitting there saying, hey, good job, you're doing good, keep going, keep going strong, keep it up, keep going. And in verses 3 through 6, he's talking about how he remembers them, he's thankful for them. 
the, you know, the team's doing a good job. He's pra pra praising them is what he's doing. He's thanking them and praising them. And that the work that is going on right now, the work that is starting to continue, he's sitting there going, it's going to complete. It's going to keep going. Keep going until Christ returns. He's sitting there saying, just keep going, keep it up, keep it up. You're doing good, keep going. And not yelling. He's not going to sit there and force them to keep going. He's sitting there with words. He's sitting there going, hey, do this. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep it going. And so that is the first thing is you have to have a coach. Paul is his coach. Keeps going on. And the second part of the team is you have to have, there has to be a team. You've got to have players for the team. You can't have a coach and then nobody to sit there and coach. You've got to have a team. You've got to have the players to coach. And, and in verses uh, 8, oh, I'm sorry, 7 and 8, this is where you see this team mentality. Is Paul is talking about how he's in chains, how he's in bondage. What he means he's in chains is in Acts chapter 28, he talks about this a little bit as, as he is in Rome. He's writing, writing this letter to the Philippians, he's in Rome. Then he is under house arrest. Now being under house arrest back in that day, back during that time, what it meant is was you're just being held somewhere until the trial. You weren't actually in prison, you weren't in jail, you are just being held somewhere until the trial. Unless you were in debt. If you were in debt to somebody, you could be thrown in jail until that debt was paid or whatever it may be. But during this time, he's just under house arrest, and he's writing this letter, and he's sitting there saying, thank you, because you are still part of the team. Thank you, you're still part of this. Even though I'm in prison and, and doing the stuff, he's defending the gospel. You know, you have that coach, once in a while, the coach that gets a little wild up. You know, he gets angry or... Something happens against your team, the coach just runs out furious and starts screaming and yelling at people. Or the other coach, the other team, or the umps, or the refs. So they're saying, you're doing a horrible job, you're doing a, this is not fair. And all of a sudden the ref throws him out. You know? The coach gets kicked out, and it's just like, well, you know, the coach got kicked out. But the team is still supporting the coach. The team is still supporting the coach. You know, the coach might walk out and go, dang it, I shouldn't have done all that. But, okay, okay the team can still carry on and still do the job. Yeah. And Paul is sitting there defending the gospel. That's why he's in house arrest. Is he was sitting there standing up for the gospel, standing up for what he believed was right. And the Philippians are sitting there hearing about this and they're going, okay, you know, we'll still stand firm, we'll still stand with you, we'll still be a part of this that is going on, be in fellowship with this, and still continue going. And then our third point that will continue on from here, you have to have a team. You've got to have words of encouragement. You know, you've got to have that coach gets that, that speech that just gets everyone ready to go, ready to fight, ready to go out there and shoot some baskets, ready just to win the game. You know that speech at halftime where your team's doing a horrible job? The coach comes in and goes, hey, all right, we got to step it up now. You know, he gives those words, he just kisses them, keeps wilding up, and you guys get fired up, fired up, fired up, and you're like, okay, we can do this, we can win. Type of mentality, and that's what Paul has here. That's what Paul is doing. In these later verses, of uh, verses 9 through 11, as he is talking, uh, he's talking about how that their love to still more and more grow. That your love, the words of encouragement, your love, the love that you already have can still grow and grow and grow more and more and more in wisdom and in discernment. Keep going. Keep persevering. You're still doing a good job. Keep going. Keep going. You still, even though Paul is in prison, he's still coaching the Philippians and saying, hey, keep doing this. You're doing a good job. Keep it up and keep going. And then he says that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Approve the things that are excellent. And so he's sitting there saying, keep going, keep going strong, but make sure you pick the right things. You know, make sure you go for excellence. Don't settle for good, don't settle for great, but continue on for excellence, to do your best, to keep going and doing your best. And that's what words of encouragement are from Paul there. And they'd be saying, being sincere, be humble about yourself. Don't put on this fake attitude, don't be a fake baloney and all this stuff that's going on, but sit there and be real. But be excellent in what you do. Strive for the best. And you know, that could be to you today. That could be in your finances. That could be in your workplace. That could be relationships in your life. It's going, going for excellence. Going for great. And going beyond what is just settling for good. But going for more and more and more. So Paul has this mentality, this coach, this coaching way, this coaching deal. And what you see from this is this is a team here. Got a team. And now what would it be like if this church... If you were to step up and be a part of this team. Now what I'm talking about is when I'm saying this team, being a part of this team, kind of possibly thinking, what is he talking about being this team? What I'm talking about is being this team is being a Christ follower. And being a part of the team to where you have the coach. Now this coach that I'm talking about, 
Now, it's not Paul, but this coach that I'm talking about when you're a Christ follower is the person who has never lost a game, who has never known defeat, who has always been victorious. This coach is God. Never lost, never lost a battle, never lost a game. Now, I would love to be a part of the team that always won. Man, when you're winning, you're always just like, yes, 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 go, go, go. Doing a good job. You feel so good about yourself. You're on the winning team. But you have those tendencies when you're on the losing team to, you, know, you just feel like a failure. feel horrible. What am I doing here? Why am I even playing this sport if I keep losing all the time? You know, kind of with me with tennis or some of those sports that I played when I was younger, being on the C team in basketball. You know, it's just, you know, why do I keep playing if I keep failing and losing? But the great thing you got to know today is that God is a coach who has never lost. He wins and wins and wins, and I'm a part of that team. Being a part of that team that's always going to win and you know is going to be victorious, man, great hope and great faith in knowing that no matter what I do, what I do as a part of this team, I'm always going to come out victorious. Even if somehow I fail in the most miserable way with either relationships, with money, with my job, with whatever it may be, even though I may fail at that. I'm still part of this team that God has for me. That I'm still a winner. That I'm still keep going and keep going. That I'm still a part of it. And it is a wonderful thing. And now this thing is that what I encourage you to do to be. And now as we can see with this video of Sandlot, you had Benny, the coach. What did he do? He sat there and he goes, you know what? You guys, this guy, he can be in our team. Right here, he picked him. He didn't sit there. He just went out there. You know, I don't, come play with us. Come play with us. In a way, that's God. God sat there. He already picked you. You know, when you're doing baseball, doing any other kind of sport, you have tryouts. You have to go try out, and they rank you if uh, you're horrible or you're really good. And the teams are, you have to pick a few good people and pick a few bad people. You know, that's how coaches are. you got to be on a team. Even when you're 12 years old, no matter what, you got to get picked on a team. I mean, come on. They're not going to sit there and go, you're so bad. We're not going to put you on a team. They're like, oh, we'll put you on a team. But God has already sat there and gone, you didn't even try out. He's already sat there and seen you and going, wait, I want you. I picked you. I want you on my team. I know what you can do. I see what you have done. But I can still train, help develop, and help continue on and make you great and excellent. I want you on my team. He already sees the potential in you. And so Benny saw this in Smalls. You know, he goes, you know what? He may be a little rough. He may not be that good right now, but I'm going to make him great. I'm going to make him excellent. And what do we see? We see Benny go out there, go to Smalls, and go, hey, you can do this. You can throw the ball. Shows him how to throw the ball. And then he shows him, you know, how to catch, you know, even if it's just sitting there, standing there, going, please, 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 don't make me look like a fool, you know. I thought of that a few times when I was out in the field. Pop fly would come my way and go, please, Lord, just let me catch this thing. Please, just let me catch this thing. And I'd catch it, you know. It's a wonderful feeling when you're sitting there and you catch that ball, you're just like, oh. Yes, 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 yes. Because of all the training and guidance that the coach would give me. Now, God is that person who will sit there and train and develop and continue to lead and lead and lead. He will sit there and teach you new traits. He will teach you new skills. And he'll love you. That is one of the greatest things that this coach, that God can offer to you, is love. He loves you no matter what you have done and what you will do. And now, when you become a part of this team, you have all this team here. The church, you know, the church body, friends who are fellow believers who will sit there, hopefully, most likely will support you through anything that is going on, help you through anything going on. If you need help in something, they will be there for you. And that is the church body. So it's coming and being a part of this team, that is it there. Now, if you're saying, Kenny, I've never been a part of a team that has won, has, I've always been a loser, I've you know, I've always failed, but Kenny, I want to be on your team. I want to be on the team that you're on, to where you're constantly winning and winning and winning with God. I want to be on the team. And if you're saying, yes, I want to do that, I encourage you after the service, come up, come talk to me. Or find a pastor, we're going to have some prayer partners lined up here. Come up and talk to one of them, and they will pray with you and lead you into following Christ. And to being a part of this team of following Christ, of serving Him, going after him and reaching out to others so they, could, they too can be a part of this team that we are on. This team that's constantly winning and winning over the forces of darkness.
and over the things that come up against us. And I, I encourage you to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and pray. Lord, I just thank you for this time. I think you've got to just sit there and just hear about you and learn about you. And uh, through Paul and the Philippians, I just thank you. I pray you be with us this week and touch our hearts and help us to remember we are a team and we are a player on this team and we are a team player. And just uh, be with us and dwell in us in your name. Amen. And now I encourage you to come back next week because our pastoral team is going to kick it up into rear gear with Keldon Gear next week and she's going to continue on our series and he's going to take it to a whole nother level. <laughs> thank you.